right now we're going to a topic we'd all be interested in and like having more of happiness and elusive quality. But what would you do if you had to, a toolkit that helped you to take concrete steps towards leading a happier life? Well, GP Mark Rowe is on a mission to give people a prescription for happiness and he joins me in studio. You're going on something of a road show. We can talk about that at the end. People have to pay in, but it's a lot less than visiting the GP. <laughs> How do you define is. happiness, Mark? That's a really, really good question, Sean, and it's something that positive psychologists and researchers are still trying to grapple with because it's such a unique and subjective experience. I mean, you know, the the origins of the word uh, happiness come from the Icelandic word hap, which meant by chance or by luck. And, you know, that created this sense that, you know, happiness was the cards you were dealt in life. Happiness was about some sort of destination. I mean, when I was a young boy growing up, you know, like many of your listeners, I uh, often got a bedtime story. And it invariably ended with a version of, and the prince and the princess lived happily ever after. And that could create that sort of sense that happiness was a destination. But really, it's not. Happiness is a choice. And that's what's been so exciting for me as uh, someone trained in healthcare, as a doctor, to learn that the thoughts you choose to focus on, the emotions you choose to feel... And then the actions, sometimes the very small little baby steps you choose to take each and every day can make such a difference. Aristotle, who was, uh, you know, a a famous philosopher, and he wrote a book about happiness and well-being 2,300 years ago called The Nicomachean Ethics. That's how long ago they were looking at this question of happiness. And he said that happiness is a mixture of pleasure, engagement and meaning. So, you know, we all like pleasure in life. We all like good things. We all like scratching an itch. Uh, I love a bit of dark chocolate. We all have our pleasures. But pleasure alone won't give us sustainable happiness. You need engagement, which is, you know, William Butler Yeats said that happiness is not about pleasure or virtue or this or that. We are happiest when we are growing. And engagement is setting okay, goals so that allow you to grow. So They're all admirable thoughts. I suppose what, the, what we need to know now is what we do to make things happen. I would be no great ad for exercise, but I remember concluding very clearly in the last uh, 12 months or so that nothing changes your mindset and how you're feeling so much as swimming in the sea. And I suppose a lot of people would say something similar about taking some vigorous exercise. Exercise, Sean, I call the greatest pill of all. It is so good. It changes the, the, ke- the chemical soup in your brain. It releases six or seven different hormones, including serotonin and, and dopamine and all sorts of hormones that make us feel more calm, more energised, more optimistic. It helps us to de-stress and makes us feel happier. And just 20 minutes a day can really change your mindset, allow you to feel much more open and allow you to feel much more positive. And, you know, no matter how unfit you are, how old you are, it's never too late to reap the game changing benefits of exercise. Simply getting getting out for a walk. You know, it's 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 amazing what exercise can do. What else do people need to get in or get out of their lives? I think, as I said to you, Sean, happiness is a choice. One of the best things you can do is to learn to express gratitude. Because when you are grateful for what you have, you're not taking things for granted anymore. You're taking things as granted. Count your blessings, as think is what your granny said. Count your blessings. There's a lot to be said for it. And for anyone that has got children, you know, at night time, um, teaching them to look on three good things that happened that day. It's a great way of getting them off to sleep, focusing on what's going well. And, you know, uh, in today's age, Sean, you know, there's so much uh, social media, Facebook. And, you know, there's a tendency for our kids and for teenagers particularly to be looking at what other kids are doing and saying, oh, you know, why, why am I not out having a great time with my friends? And I call that comparitis. And that can trigger envy and trigger negativity and f- feelings of inadequacy. So... Being grateful for what you have is a really powerful way to feel better. What about the people around us? Um, How influenced are we in regard to our own happiness by whether they are cheerful, kind of happy people or people with a long face, the Job's comforters? Emotion is extremely contagious. Now, that's good news because, you know, if if one of your friends is living uh, within a mile of you and feels happy, you're going to feel 25% happier. And they've shown that happiness can be contagious out to three degrees of separation. So if Sean is feeling good today, Sean's friends will feel happier by 15%. Sean's friends' friends will feel 10% happier. Who worked out those figures? A man called Chris Dacus, one of the most brilliant physicians in the world. He's based in Harvard Medical School and he's been studying the power of social networks. 
how it is that people that smoke are more likely to associate with smokers, how people that exercise are more likely to associate with people that exercise. The power of social networks, it's, it's an emerging phenomenon in health understanding. Yeah, and I, I, I gather you've got um, sort of factors, we'll call them, that you refer to as the poisonous dwarves. Yeah, so I talk about negative emotion, Sean, as being like the seven poison dwarfs because it's so bad for us. In fact, negative emotion can be so bad for an organisation. It can be like passive cigarette smoking. And I've given these guys names. So there's fear, there's envy, anger, anxiety, guilt, shame and sad. And they're real and they're in all of our lives. So this idea of, oh, happiness is about happyology and it's about ignoring the negative or ignoring reality or ignoring the challenges that we all face in our lives. It's not about that. It's about accepting that these guys are real putting them in their box, facing your fears, addressing your anger, allaying your anxiety, but bringing on positive emotion, bringing on the happy dwarfs, the feel-good factors that we all need to flourish. Okay, apply that now, because, Mark, as you say, you're a GP, you're working in Waterford. It's not the the place, it's not a place that's, um, you know, had a continuous flow of good news in recent times. Um, So how do you deal with with patients? Waterford, we're Ireland's oldest city. We're 1,100 years old this year. Garter Lane, where I first did my prescription for happiness show, is 30 years old today. We've got beautiful beaches and scenery and there's a lot of great things happening in Waterford. What yes, we no, have our challenges. What if you have no job? If you have no job and you're unemployed and unfortunately unemployment rates in Waterford particularly are far too high and, you know, well, that is, that's, that's a reality for you and that's that's not easy that's hard but what you need to do is focus focus on what's going well so be grateful for your health be grateful for your family and then figure out well how am i going to improve my situation what's the one thing i can do today to make a difference maybe maybe i need to retrain maybe i need to learn some new skills maybe i need to go back to education whatever it is we can always do something and the doing something can make a difference. Get up and get out. That's a start. Get up and get out and do something and go for a walk and feel better after that. It's a start. You talk as well about, is it keeping a gratitude diary? Keeping a gratitude diary. So, you know, Marcus Aurelius, who who was one of the great Roman philosophers, and he wrote meditations about two and a half thousand years ago. He was the first great exponent of the journal, writing your thoughts down, writing down how you feel, writing down your goals. And certainly in terms of gratitude, writing down... Two or three things you feel good about and maybe five lines on on one of those things and just doing it once or twice a week. You don't have to do this every day. It's a powerful way to feel better because what you express in your journal becomes impressed in your mind. How long do you think it would take somebody who was prepared to approach this in a fairly consistent or serious way? How long would it take them to improve their lives? I think you can start to improve your life immediately. But the evidence is that, you know, in terms of gratitude, you need to persist with it for several weeks. In terms of building new habits, the latest research tells us that it takes about 66 days, Sean, to build a new habit or break an old habit. And that's for for me what's been one of the most interesting things on this journey for me has been learning that, you know, intuitively, most people know what they should do. Most people know they should exercise, they should eat well, they should, uh, you know, de-stress and so on, not smoke, not drink too much. But people often haven't figured out how to do it, how to build the new habits. So many people make new habits, New Year's resolutions. Come the 1st of February, the 1st of March, they've gone by the wayside. Because you need to connect the how to the why. And that's why you need to look at your psychological fitness. You need to look at your thinking. You need to look at your beliefs. You need to look at how you're feeling on the inside. And if you can join all those dots up together, you have a much better chance of improving yourself and feeling now, happier. If people want to get, to hear more, you, you talk. It's, you call it a prescription for happiness. You've got seminars, I think, in Tala, uh, in Ballymun, and in Newbridge, and you charge what is somewhere between twelve and fifteen euro for people to come and hear you. Yeah, the the, the theatre decides what the what the admission price is. I mean, my goal is to really really get out to people and really get this message out that sustainable happiness comes from within. You know, I've had the privilege of working with, with Jim Nolan, who's, who's a brilliant playwright based in Waterford, and he, he taught me, really, Sean, that, you know, you turn up and you have your script in your back pocket, but that's your starting point. The thing to do is to create a meaningful experience with the audience. And for me, that's been such fun, and I, and I just love doing it so much. Dr. Mark Rowe, GP from Waterford, thank you for coming in. Thanks we'll be million. talking more about theatre after the break. 
Today with Sean O'Rourke on RTE Radio 1.